Hello, and welcome to the CCNA Routing and Switching course offered by Simply Learn. The previous lesson focused on security. This lesson focuses on network address translation. Let us begin with the objectives of the lesson in the next slide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the concept of NAT, describe the types of NAT addresses, configure, verify, and troubleshoot NAT. Why is address translation needed at all? Let us understand this in the next slide. Devices within a local area network, LAN, usually use the private addressing scheme specified in RFC 1918. One reason for this is the scarcity of IPv4 addresses available. In some parts of the world, the Internet registries have no more IPv4 addresses to assign. Therefore, an organization normally has a limited number of IPv4 addresses. This number is not enough to provide each device with its own Internet routable IP address. There are more inside hosts than outside addresses. These Internet routable IP addresses constitute an organization's public address space. In the next slide, let us discuss NAT applications. NAT has many applications than you might expect. The common use of NAT is to provide Internet connectivity to devices that have private addresses. NAT can also handle overlapping address spaces. This occurs when the LAN is connected to another network that uses the same IP address range. This situation can happen when two companies merge. Overlapping address spaces can lead to routing problems. NAT basically reassigns addresses if they are destined for a network with an overlapping address space. NAT can also be used for load distribution for servers. A cluster of servers can be assigned one Internet routable IP address instead of each individual server using up an IP address. Let us discuss the benefits of NAT in the following slide. NAT reduces the public address space required, but NAT also provides network security. When a device sends data to the Internet, NAT translates its private address to a public address. The data is traceable only to the device that provides NAT translation, not to the device that originally sent the data. But NAT causes some undesirable side effects. Let us discuss its limitations in the next slide. NAT requires more processing resources per packet. The device that performs NAT must have additional processing power and memory to minimize any delay that could be caused by NAT. NAT hides the IP address of the device that originates data. This is an advantage when hiding an address from someone outside the LAN. It provides better security. However, it also is a disadvantage. For a network administrator, the lack of traceability makes it harder to troubleshoot. Some applications rely on end-to-end -end traceability to work properly. Configuring tunneling, for example, in a virtual private network, VPN, is more complex with NAT. Let us discuss the devices used for NAT processing. Cisco offers a line of firewalls called Adaptive Security Appliances. NAT can be performed on these appliances. Cisco routers can also perform NAT. Normally, the device that performs NAT is directly connected to the Internet Service Provider, ISP. In the next slide, let us understand different types of NAT addresses. There are four different types of addresses in NAT, inside local, inside global, outside local, and outside global. The terms local or global refer to the current location of the packet. The terms inside or outside refer to the location of the device. An inside local address is a private address referencing an inside device. It is the address of the inside host as seen from inside your LAN. This is most likely a request for comments, RFC 1918 address. An inside global address is a public address referencing an inside device. It is the address of the inside host as seen from the Internet. For example, this could be a valid public Internet routable address that the inside host is given when it exits the NAT router. In the next slide, let us discuss NAT address types for outside devices. An outside local address is a private address referencing an outside device. 
It is the address of the outside host as seen from inside your LAN. An example is the Internet Routable IP address assigned to a host that resides on the Internet. An outside global address is a public address referencing an outside device. It is the address of the outside host as seen from the Internet. In the next slide, let us discuss types of NAT addresses. Example. In the topology, there is a dividing line between inside devices, devices that are part of our local LAN, and outside devices, devices that are outside the LAN. According to the topology, to reach the demilitarized zone, DMZ server, NAT is applied to PCB's inside global address. It uses 25.25.34.3 to reach the DMZ server. PCA would use 10.1.34.4 to reach the server with no NAT involved. Between PCA and PCB, two NAT processes would be involved. Take some time to study the topology. Let us move on to types of NAT in the next slide. Static NAT maps one inside address to one outside address. It is often used for web and email servers because people outside of the LAN require a public address to reach the servers, which are often on the LAN. The topology shown on previous slide is an example of such a server. In dynamic NAT, a device is not assigned a NAT address permanently. Instead, it is assigned an address from the NAT pool as needed. In Port Address Translation, PAT, the NAT address is paired with a Layer 4 port number. This increases the number of NAT addresses significantly. PAT can be dynamic or static. Let us learn about Port Static NAT in the following slide. To assign an IP address and port statically, use IP NAT inside source static, then either TCP or UDP, and then the IP addresses and ports to map. If there are multiple servers that require access from the Internet, port static NAT can use just one IP address with different port numbers for each server. This saves routable addresses. Now let us look at dynamic NAT. There are several steps to configure dynamic NAT. First, use Standard Access List to define the inside addresses that will be translated by NAT. Then configure a NAT pool of outside addresses. The pool must be part of the subnet specified on the interface that the IP NAT outside command is applied to. In other words, it is part of the public address space assigned by the ISP. Finally, apply IP NAT inside and IP NAT outside to the appropriate interfaces. Take some time to study the commands. Let us focus on port address translation in the next slide. Port address translation, PAT, is also known as NAT overloading because, like port static NAT, it uses address and port number. In other words, it uses the same address multiple times. The only difference is the port number. There are 2 to the 16th power equals 65,536 ports that could be used for each public IP address. However, realistically, the limit would be about 4,000, depending upon Internet usage by the LAN and the capabilities of the NAT device. Configure PAT using either an interface or a pool. If you have only one public IP address, specify the interface towards the Internet. In a SOHO, you probably have one address, but that address may change at the whim of the ISP. In that case, specify the interface, which will not change. The configuration is the same as dynamic PAT until we come to choosing either interface or pool name. The overload parameter specifies PAT. We know that dynamic NAT PAT translations can expire. Can we manually clear them? Let us discuss this in the next slide. The command on the slide is used to clear dynamic entries in the translations table. You can clear all at a time or use the asterisk for all dynamic entries. You can use this command each time a NAT parameter or associated access list or interface changes. However, using this command on a production router is not advisable since it resets all of the existing dynamic translations. This means that it disconnects all of the existing user sessions with a dynamic translation. Dynamic entries ordinarily expire after 24 hours by default. 
Let us move on to the quiz questions to check your understanding of the topics covered in this lesson.